Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So um, this video that we're doing currently in some ways is tied into this Patreon exclusive video that we just put up, which is also tied in in some ways to the video that we did just preceding this, um, which was da -da -da, about Hawaiian legends exposing when earth was taken over by shape-shifting reptilians we kid you not hey, we kid you not actually the more you deep dive this the more everything becomes crystal clear um pretty crystal clear and you know interesting to note more and more people all the time are understanding the bigger picture we were quoting an article from 2013 2013 in which they were saying 12 million Americans believed that the government is shape-shifting reptilians. Uh, I bet you that has doubled or quadrupled since then, <clears throat> with good reason, because so much is being exposed. It, it's really being very, it, it's become very difficult for them to, to hide the truth because there's simply too many questions. There's too many um, open open doors, open windows, loose ends, and it's really starting to unravel quite a lot. Yeah, and the answers to those questions are in Hawaii. Uh, they're also in Southeast Asia. They're in Africa. They're in Australia. The Aboriginals have, have answers for you, too, as do the Aleutian uh, indigenous people uh, everywhere around the globe. All you got to do is go into the older stories that come out of every single culture. And they will point in this direction. This, this is really where uh, the origins of this uh, issue upon planet Earth start in the Draco constellation, also the Orion constellation. Now the Draco, the dragon constellation, dragons are all over our history. As uh, Sita's deep diving into a bone there, so I hope that doesn't disturb you guys too much. Ah, oh, dragons. This is smog. You remember the Hobbit? Uh, well, Tolkien, Tolkien took from mythology directly. In fact, he took even a lot of the names, like the names of the dwarves in uh, The Lord of the Rings uh, and all those stories. Uh, a lot of those names are names that are in history. And they're in the Nordic myths, Norse mythology, which interestingly enough may have its origins in Armenia and in the Caucasus region. You know, there's so much to this, which ultimately may have its origins in the Sumerian, Akkadian, Babylonian uh, tradition, which ultimately leads us to Mars and to Nibiru. This is how this is all tied together. Well, you know, stories of dragons, fire-breathing dragons. Oh, dragons. You have to be very, very cautious when approaching dragons. Well, yes, cautious, but I don't think all dragons are bad. I, I, think, I think at our very core, many of us have a dragon-like energy that can be um, expanded upon. So I don't think all dragons are bad, but... I do see some of that energy being utilized for um, purposes other than good. Well, the kundalini, serpentine energy, again, it is the creative energy in so many senses. Uh, it is a powerful energy that must be um, treated cautiously and cultivated slowly uh, as it can cause massive damage if people awaken too quick but yet in most humans it's really been dormant it's only starting to be awakened now in these times by natural processes which includes the the light of the sun which has a artificial uh, lens in front of it distorting that light purposely trying to slow down our ascension process all these things are really hidden in our myths well, the, the sun is definitely something that can awaken, awaken that energy, and many people simply do not understand it, and they're having all of these issues and problems. And you know, uh, oddly enough, it's it's the energy work that can help that energy rise up. But sometimes when people go out into the sun, you might really feel kind of horrible. You might feel like really, really off. But this is that energy trying to break through. And when there's blocks, emotional blocks, physical blocks, blocks from certain 
surgery blocks from car accidents it can make it so that energy is not able to expand and then it stays in the body it can make you sick so it should be taken very very seriously absolutely and invariably so many of these legends and myths about dragons involve them breathing fire and destroying towns and villages people civilizations cultures when their wrath is angered oh yes you know again we have so many of these stories and it's etched in our very dna it's like it's right there in our memory bank mm -hmm. i mean there's just this uh beauty and magnificence type of energy with them a very mystical magical type of energy with the dragon i i think it just really gets distorted and it gets utilized you know like everything else it gets utilized and misused well i i think again what we do is we tend to put them all in one basket and this is what society will do this is what uh, trauma will do is it'll make us view every single uh, dragon energy uh, like it is that of the control system which has harmed humanity time and time again there are in Chinese mythology the legends of the dragon kings you know which this is one of them Long Wang lords over the seas known as a dragon king he's fearsome guardian deity who controls all dragon sea creatures ocean and and the weather and the weather you know there's many many weather gods weather deities storm gods per se he does have a temper but he is seen as a symbol of good a symbol of good fortune and mythological embodiment of the concept of yang yang that powerful masculine aggressive energy so he's popular among chinese coastal communities uh four major uh, dragon kings in chinese mythology but we could even go and see them interwoven in semi-historical person personages is like the the yellow emperor which we get so much of um classical chinese uh, traditional medicine from you know, when you look at this, and again, if I encourage everyone to go out and check out either um, the Names of God version that's here in Bible Gateway, the Orthodox Jewish Bible, again, because they're using the actual words uh, from the Old Testament, the Old Testament, again, in Hebrew, and then translated and translated and translated again and again and again it's an ongoing profit process uh, as again the oldest complete uh, Torah is dating from somewhere between uh, 900 and 1100 CE common era CE CE only a thousand years ago or maybe even less uh, because, you know, again, it, we, we get this impression that it's very ancient, but in reality, it, it's been constantly revised. And especially when you go from, uh, you know, again, Hebrew to maybe Latin to maybe Greek, then to, you know, Old English to English. I mean, we wouldn't understand people speaking English in England 500 years ago. We'd have no clue what they were saying uh, for those of us that speak English. But when we see they've changed, um, changed literal definitions or stressed some definitions that were not in common use way, way back, you'll see there's a different picture here. And in fact, it, when we look to the Hebrew mythology, it will be in agreement with other myths around the world. And so when we, when we looked here to Isaiah 42, uh, it paints a very, very scary uh, picture of a very wrathful Yahweh. In fact, a wrathful Yahweh that when you look at the way it talks about what Yahweh does, you know, he, he's, he pours out the burning heat of his anger and the strength and the fury, and it goes on, sets fire all around him, but he isn't consumed by the fire. In fact, many have caught on that this is really talking about Yahweh exactly as you would talk about a dragon. Exactly. It's something to be feared. It's something that when, you know, their wrath is kindled, watch out because they will burn and destroy everything around them. 
In fact, there's multiple passages that seem to be describing Yahweh as a dragon. And, you know, again, you can look at the different because if you're reading this and somebody has only read the King James or the New Living Bible or one of those translations, you won't understand a single word here. <laughs> it's going to be like you're reading a different language because you are and because the original interpretation is something much, much different again. And it's it's not just, uh, again, one verse. There's many verses that talk about this. And and you go to the name name of God's one. At least it's telling you Yahweh El. Now El is singular, so it means Yahweh, the mighty Yahweh, the mighty one that is named Yahweh, the judge of certain humans that is named Yahweh. Because again, the the first word we have is Elohim, which is in plural which again is mostly used to mean mighty ones, powerful ones, or the judges, those that rule over humans because they're not of the classification of humans. And so this is when Yahweh, as one of the mighty ones, is calling out to one portion of the Hebrew people, uh, you know, going again, picking out Abraham, or the being that is, is designated as Abraham, to be his people because, you know, it's, it just gives you in Deuteronomy 32 and in Psalm 82, the same story that we see in the, in the, um, the Genesis stories of the Sumerians, which again were translated way before Zechariah Sitchin was born. <clears throat> has nothing to do with Zechariah Sitchin. But we also find these stories echoed in other traditions as well. We find them in the Greek tradition. And the Greek, again, story will, will, is vastly, vastly older and very clear than anything biblical. The Bible stories, and in fact, uh, the stories of the Old Testament are, are much more revised and they are um, not even close to as old as what we have coming from the Greek tradition. And so, you know, Yahweh is one, just one being, and he is a warlord. He is an aggressive warlord. Uh, he is, again, he's called the Lord of hosts. Hosts are armies. And it is a military takeover of the earth that has happened, and he is but one, just one, of a group that has taken over the planet. And, and this is, again, echoed in multiple places. And they rule ruthlessly, and they pick out certain humans that will be uh, their, basically their kings and queens that they will leave in their stead when they uh, remove themselves and go and do their venturing and conquering elsewhere. They, they move from one planet to another, and, and they take over different areas. And, and once they have their system in place, they move on. Think to the Roman Empire. What did the Roman Empire do? It conquered a group. It conquered a people. It got people from within that own group of people to collect taxes, send it to Rome, to put up their own. They would train the armies in the Roman way of those tribes that they conquered and then they would pretty much leave. They might leave a few behind of their own to watch over things until they knew everything was, you know, quote unquote kosher. Uh, it was going according to plan. The people are part of the system now and then they move on to a new tribe to conquer and again get those within that new tribe to follow the Roman way set them up in positions of power where they live wonderful lives, much more luxurious lives than the masses, so they want to keep their position, set up their own militaries there, train them in the Roman way, move on, do it again. This is what the process does. Now, those that don't agree or those that resist, as this one right here uh, from the Orthodox Jewish Bible, 2 Kings 19.35 and 37, is talking about what happens if you if you go against the system, uh, 185,000 people killed overnight by extraterrestrial power and, and might and weaponry. 
In fact, over and over again, we see these extraterrestrials use certain tactics. You know, if they don't kill them directly, uh, they use weather to kill them, natural disasters they trigger, and they also are very fond of pestilence and plagues. Again, El, literally, power or might, Eloa, mighty one, Elohim, mighty ones, plural. This is an Elohim story, the mighty ones. As you see, the association of Yahweh with serpents and dragons, and this is saying, well, the, the Israelites worshipped serpents, didn't they? Why do you think there was a prohibition against anything that was carved? No graven images, because you can't see what we look like. Yet Moses had a staff, and it was serpentine. Aaron's staff was serpentine. It says that they were held over their head in battle, and even, you know, there's a big uh, biblical uh, quote where it's talking about how as long as that staff was held up, the Israelites were winning. As soon as his arms started going down, they started to lose. Can produce thunder, hail, lightning. Can turn into a snake. Can also yield locusts. You know, again, some type of a tool of a sort, some sort of technology. It's pretty interesting and also can call force plague and bring water or blood from the earth. Why is Moses depicted with horns? Why does he start to look like Baphomet? Yeah, I mean, it's not just one depiction. It's all over the place that Moses looks like a hairy guy with horns. You know, very, very devilish looking, is it not? It's pretty devilish looking. It certainly is, and there's a reason why, because it's all interconnected. Some people have uh, discovered that, yeah, what we're talking about here, it seems like Yahweh is literally a dragon. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was wroth, and there a smoke went out of his nostrils. Fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. This sounds like a dragon. It certainly does. How else can you depict that? And it's in the Bible. Well, his energy certainly is not very nice. <laughs> not very nice at all when I try to feel that energy. It's very dark. Very, very dark. But, you know, I, I look at this and I feel, okay, this really seems to outline it very nicely. How the the control system is the Bible. The Bible is the control system. And that's why they want everybody to have a book and worship it and follow the rules in the Bible because it's, it is your controllers. This is what the controllers want you to do. So when someone <clears throat> who believes the Bible is, is good and really just good, they say, oh no, watch out, they're coming for your Bible. That's just them saying, oh no, watch out, they're coming for their control system map because too many people are figuring out that the Bible is the control system. And now and they the can Quran start to... Too in the Quran, and they can start to translate it as such. So, I don't know, I, I think this really spells it out nicely, uh, why we always kind of side-eye that Bible and look at it like, hmm, it means something far different to us than it does of so many other people. Well, you know, Revelation, you said, it said that the dragon leads the whole world astray. And there you go. The Abrahamic tradition leads the whole world astray because the Abrahamic tradition is founded by the Draco. Uh, again, you know, the dragon depiction is a draconian depiction. And it couldn't be any more clearer than this. Smoke out of his nostrils, fire out of his mouth, devoured, you know, hundreds of thousands. Uh, 185,000 killed in, in one episode, 70,000 killed overnight in another releasing plagues and pestilences upon the land, uh, killing through weather warfare. It's all very, very clear. And in Revelation, again, it says the, the dragon leads the whole world astray. Well, that's your fundamentalist religion of the Abrahamic tradition. That's those that fundamentally believe in, in Christianity in a fundamental light, as opposed to a more mystical light, a, a more... A late more like the Gnostics were, were teaching because, again, the, the Gnostics were wiped out. So that should kind of tell you something, too, because they, the system wiped out everybody that resisted against it. So the Gnostics were, were wiped out and called heretics because, you know, they were preaching something that wasn't uh, in the benefit of the control system and in the benefit of the control system maintaining power through it. They can't maintain power through it when the Gnostics were saying, 
you know, the light of source is within you. All you got to do is look within. There's no control in that. It's again, it's it's the the power structure of the church, of the priest and of the pope and which branches down and they still got you if you're if you're still uh, in one of the Protestant uh, points of view, as long as you believe in blood sacrifice and, and original sin uh, and all of this, you know, you, they still got you. They still have you in that mi mindset because they are keeping us divided. And that's exactly what they want to do. It's all right there again. You know, so if Yahweh is ultimately depicted as a, a serpent and a dragon of old, which again, there are graven images. Uh, there's images from Mesopotamia of these feathered winged serpent type beings. And they're also in Mesoamerica and they're also almost exactly alike. So the people were seeing these same beings. When you look to Inanna, uh, again, you know, some, some people will equate Inanna. I've seen it said that uh, there are those that believe that she started the the Hin Hindu Valley, you know, the Hindus, the Indus Valley, the Hindu uh, tradition, and and broke off. No, no, no. This is a reptilian. Anana is not the same as as an energy that you would feel from Radhe or Sita or Lakshmi or Parvati. Um, no, no, very different. This is an Anunnaki energy notice the owls notice her feet again feathered serpentine reptilian beings it's interesting that the dinosaurs were were thought to look like one thing and now we discover that most dinosaurs more than likely had feathers on them yes well again this is where this comes from as you see she's stepping on uh, the lions or these lionish uh, entities Again, denoting her power, maybe over Lyra and Lyrans. You know, again, it's all right there. Mm -hmm. It is. And um, just like the other few videos that we've done, this information is not easy to look at. So there's going to be some people, no matter how plainly you put it in front of them, they're, they're just going to ignore it. It's that cognitive dissonance, which can be very dangerous, but some people utilize it as a... Um, protection mechanism for their very soul because they simply cannot believe that the world that we live in and the controllers that control us and the controllers that wrote the Bible how could they be so evil how could they do something so horrible well because th that's who they are it it's really quite simple why does a scorpion sting um, it's just natural to them and, and that's something we need to identify be able to identify in this world and turn and walk away from it and understand when this energy is going to come inside of our world and disrupt our life don't let it you know but you can't do that until you can identify it and identify it properly yeah at this point in time we still have two-thirds of the world saying they're either christian or or muslim and so they they don't understand and and there's many um that are probably uh, could be classified as saints within the system irregardless of the system because they really don't understand and they're still just uh, sending out positive light love and hope without understanding the real history that is there behind all this it's a very very cold-blooded system and again uh, the prohibition against showing what the beings look like which came you know, out of that tradition is very very purposeful and you know yet we have depictions time and time again of, of these beings and descriptions of the beings note the feet and note inana's feet yeah this this is the core this is the root of so many of our different legends and what did these beings really look like i thought i i did kind of feel that this was a, a pretty interesting depiction right here i hadn't seen this one before it is. It's, it's very interesting. It's a depiction of those who who they might consider to be elders of sorts, you know, elders of those reptilian type things, those who who make the rules, those who sit and weigh the information and um, decide, you know, when is it appropriate to simply make some things as something a means to an end. And that's what the system does. They sit down and they figure out what do they need to do 
to reach their goal and they really do not care what happens to other entities because they need to reach their goal and this to me feels pretty close uh to to uh enlil and enki would you say that this feels pretty pretty close i mean we've actually gotten um, a psychic picture so to speak of of enki um, and you can't see the scales because it's it's done in water um, but it it doesn't look far from this and actually even the clothes like the one in the middle reminds me of the pope uh, dressed to a degree and and that's where this comes from right this is where they get their you know th their copycat from yeah this this feels very very um, accurate uh, and you know, again, a lot of the world's waking up to the fact that, yeah, Draco reptilians, you know, this is exactly what it is. So those things that you call fallen angels, again, the Hebrew word for angel translates to messenger. Messenger. They're not talking about angels like we would think. They're not, they're, they're not talking about that at all. They're talking about messengers of the mighty ones which were utilized to communicate with the humans that were serving them. So you had the classification of these, you know, reptilian beings really up at the top. And then they had various different beings. It could be, it could be greys, you know, coming. It could be also other human hybrids, uh, you know, or humans. That would be the, the Malachim, that they would be the actual messengers. Again, it, it's it's misunderstanding through mistranslation, and boy, that doesn't that shine Godzilla on a new light? It really does. Think about it, Godzilla, that whole thing, that whole modern day myth, you know, of of a gigantic mammoth reptilian. How about underworld? You have shape shifting can appear. Uh, Marcus can appear as human. Or the, he could look like this. And this, again, is not maybe too far off from the truth either. As we see the origin of our vampire legends, you know, there's different types of vampire. Um, but absolutely, in many ways, you are talking about uh, the draconian reptilian beings that they don't really seem to like the light. You know, Cindy was getting visions of a different planet that was under their control yesterday. And the beings are um, perhaps just brains, brainstem. Inside, everything else is, is robotic. Um, and they're keeping the consciousness trapped by transplanting the brain and, and the brainstem into uh, a ro robot body, basically, to keep the soul spark, the, the soul of the person, trapped and utilizing it for energy and there's a whole planet that she was viewing that is done in this way by the draconian power system yeah i mean it was it was pretty disturbing but the information came so i decided to tell mike about it just because it was there and that's what i'm supposed to do but it was really very yucky because it's like these people were trapped inside of these mechanical things and these there there was a type of energy there was so much control over these mechanical bodies um that it's like in lockstep with time it's almost like it had to be uh created for something of just their entertainment or their need to have this to have the soul spark and have it do what they want complete utter control so there's beings inside of these suits and they have no ability of free will they're just they're just kept alive they're kept alive so that they can be utilized as as a mechanism and it was really disturbing yeah, you get a lot of people uh, doing their thoughts on the depictions of what Yahweh uh, really looked like. And then, of course, you have Yalda, Yalda Baoth from uh, the Gnostic point of view, the Demiurgos, you know, the craftsman of this world. But, you know, again, there's a lot of distortion and there's a lot of um, blending of different energies, the natural and the unnatural, uh, together. You know, it's, it's just... Uh, it's right there in front of us 
you know, again, saying all these things about the dragon and revelation and, you know, the two beasts and the great deception. Well, you know, it's it's fundamentalism. It, it is. It, it's fundamentalist Christianity and Islam. And that's a hard nut to swallow, but it is the case. These are the oldest representations we have of Yahweh and his Asherah, which, you know, this is coming from 750 to 800 BC. These are far older than anything. The Dead Sea Scrolls, the oldest portions of the Dead Sea Scrolls are probably from 100 AD to 200 BC. These are from 750 to 800 BC. And this is Yahweh right here. He doesn't really look perfectly human, does he not? And it does look like he's wearing some sort of crown or are they horns? I don't know. Very, very curious. Um, you know, you could definitely say he is male. That's the only thing you can say. Um, this, boy, this looks like a demonic kind of creature, does it not? And this is Yahweh on the throne with his Asherah, 750 BC. Again, there was a female component that was with Yahweh. And then we see a lot of interesting symbolism, a lot that's very familiar. And, uh, you know, it's just right there in front of our faces. Mm -hmm. It's like, what do you do with this information? What do you do with this very jagged pill? Are, are you able to get it down? And um, I can tell you from personal experience, if you are able to understand the concept of the controllers and what they are doing to you, you're able to put this information down and not go back to it and the beauty if you can do that is you find yourself you find your self you find out who you are you are no longer controlled by a book that tells you who you are and tells you how you should be and tells you everything you pull up your your own values your own morals you feel inside of yourself for what is right and what is wrong so I think that's the biggest blessing out of all of this is that you could find yourself. Yeah, when you look to Revelation 22 as well, uh, what does it say about those that decide to serve? Well, they'll be taken to a new world where there's no more sun and moon of this world. They'll be taken elsewhere. This is you know part of that missing. Where did the missing people go? Well, some of them are not on earth anymore. Uh, and you will have no more sorrow or pain or death because you will not really have your emotions. You'll be entrapped in some sort of artificial body, some sort of cyborg is, is really the reality of what they're saying. This is how the, the Weefers uh, sell this. They, they, you know, their Klaus is on record saying to people, you know, we're going to replicate your brain and, and your nervous system. And we're going to download you. I mean, this is what they, they sell them on. And it's the same thing, though. You will work day and, day and night serving. You're going to be a slave still. Just somewhere else. Maybe on a mothership. Maybe on Nibiru, which is very, very dark and dreary. Uh, it's really uh, a lot like Vader's place when you look at it. And then, you know, Darth Vader, Dark Father, is really another analogy to what they're doing. They're creating more machine than human. They're just trapping the human soul in a machine where they could indefinitely use it, like the Matrix says, as a battery. It's all right in front of our faces. Mm -hmm. It's all very disturbing too. And it, it takes a while to go through an awakening and it takes uh, time and understanding and patience with yourself. And it takes a, an awful lot of sifting because so many people have read this information all of their life and they've taken it unto themselves and they've just adopted it as a way of life but this is where you know you're reborn you're reborn you're reborn under uh, finding out who you are and I, I mean look at all the cultures that they absolutely had to squash and drowned over this um, complete and whole ways of life were destroyed completely destroyed because they were a threat to the control system. Um, now's our chance to find ourselves again. 
as always guys thanks for your support much love you may be blessed by the source of all because there is one source that binds us all together and you are a fractal of that source so you have tremendous power and value and this is why this whole illusion is is what it is source bless and namaste namaste